I have just released Deep Research, which is basically an agent that conducts multi-step research on the internet for complex tasks. Now I'm going to be showing you live exactly how it works, what to do, how to get access, plus how to use it step by step. You can see this was just recently announced, so it literally just came out, it's a brand new feature, and basically it uses an agent to synthesize large amounts of online information and complete multi-research tasks for you. Now it is available for pro users today and it will be available for Plus and Team Next. Here's an example of it in action, so you can just select the deep research section. I've actually got it inside my chat GPT, so we'll be testing out in a second, and then it can just compile really detailed research reports on whatever you want. Now, this is pretty wild because you can actually see the reasoning right here, so you can see the step-by-step -step processes, and apparently it can basically condense like days of research into literally just a few minutes. So it can save hundreds of hours. So you can see here, for example, they've said, today we're launching deep research in ChatGPT, a new agentic capability. And bear in mind, like the way the world is going, if you haven't realized it already, and this is moving so, so fast, is that agents are more and more becoming a part of the workflows with AI, which means that a lot of the processes you might have used humans for, for example, like video research or content research, like I'm doing for this video, I can now automate directly using open AI, and it is absolutely mind-blowing. So it, you can see here it says, for example, it accomplishes in tens of minutes what would take a human many hours, right? So you basically condense the feedback loops so that you can get results now, not like in five days time or, you know, after, you know, without any complaints, it's like having a super powered friend who can just go off and do research. And you can see here, it says, this is powered by a version of the upcoming Open AI 03 model that's optimized for web browsing and data analysis. It leverages reasoning to search, interpret, and analyze massive amounts of text, images, and PDFs on the internet, pivoting as needed in reaction to information. Now. We'll come on to more of the details here. Let me break it down exactly how it goes. So, so if you're wondering how to use this, you can use this inside, for example, like O3 Mini High allows it. So you just select deep research like that. You can use it on ChatGPT4 Pro mode as well. So it's amazing how many different features you can use it in. It's not limited, like, unlike the search feature. And also if you select deep research, you can't select search, right? So you get one choice or the other. I'm assuming because deep research searches the web anyway. So for example, if we say inside ChatGPT, research ChatGPT versus DeepSeek, create a really detailed research report about everything, but make it beautifully formatted, plus include plenty of stats and make it third grade level. We don't want to make it too complicated right now. And then it says, just to clarify, would you like the research to focus on ChatGPT versus DeepSeek in terms of their general capabilities, accuracy, strengths, or specific applications, right? So it's really thinking out the whole research process. And what you have to note here is like, this is pretty scary because for example, I would previously hire a researcher, you know, and this would have to be someone who's very in depth, very detailed, very thorough, and it would take days to get that research back, particularly if it was about a complex topic for one of my videos. Now you can just automate this in 10 minutes and I can bypass hiring someone, right? I can just speak to ChatGPT and get it to do it for me using this new deep research agent. So I'm going to say, give me everything, my friend, plus the visual comparisons, reviews, research from all places is okay. Which is interesting because where it says, do you prefer sources or independent research? It seems like basically you know, you, you got to put it in, in perspective of AI, right? It doesn't know what's an authority and what's not an authority unless it's got its own trained data. And so one of the things to note here is like, you might say, okay, only look at academic resources when you're using this process. And then it says, should I include user reviews and opinions, which I think is particularly useful if, for example, you are doing a review piece yourself or you are analyzing the market, right? And you're trying to figure out, okay, what are people into, what are people not into, etc. And then for the visual comparison, like charts, tables, etc., that should be super useful to see. Now, you can see here, it's basically got a loading, and this reminds me of ChatGPT 01 Pro, where, you know, it's got a loading bar, it might take five or 10 minutes, but I think actually for deep research, unlike ChatGPT 01 Pro's responses, this might take like 30 minutes. Now, it's actually going faster than expected right there. And you can see it said, right, great, I'll conduct an in-depth research report comparing ChatGPT and DeepSeek, 
covering everything from general capabilities, accuracy, strengths, etc. The research will be based on multiple sources and the language will be at a third grade level. So it sounds really promising. Now, what you can also see here is that it's reading through all the different sources. So for example, like DataCamp seems to be one that's particularly focusing on. It's checking Reddit for AI comparison points. I don't know if you want to trust Reddit, honestly, for your research. It's going to be full of pretty savage comments if that's the case. And then you can see it's saying like I'm pulling together information. So it's kind of got like a process and it's mapping out exactly how it works. Plus, if you click on this bit, it seems to have the sources, right? So it's it's got a strange level of sources like right, data camp, this website, business insider makes sense, Twitter I've never heard of. Reddit, why are we using Reddit? It's like it's not Google, mate. It's not Google is I get it with Google, like they love to rank Reddit, but why are they using but it's interesting how they're using so many sources from Reddit. Also, Write Sonic, which is an AI tool, if I'm right. Interesting. So it seems like it's going through all these pages. And when it actually has the sources, it doesn't seem to have the actual link to the specific page, right? So it's actually just linking directly to reddit.com in the sources, which is kind of weird. But let's see how it goes. So it's nearly halfway through that. What I want to show you now is a comparison versus something like, right? So Perplexity is, is one of my favorite research tools, undeniably, right? So you can do like a pro search here so we can select pro and then we can focus on like academic research, maths, writing, video, social, etc. We can also use like DeepSeek R1 or Deep or Reasoning O3 Mini to get results. Honestly, for research, you're probably just going to use Pro. But actually, I'm going to select O3 Mini because I want to compare them. And also, this is a reasoning model. So you're connecting a reasoning model, which is very, very logical, great at understanding, coding, thinking things out in like a, a logical map and process, and like step by step it will think that out before it gives you a result back. Whereas for example, if you're just using the pro mode, it's not gonna think it out much. It's not gonna be much reasoning behind it. So let's test them out side by side. Obviously, perplexity shouldn't be anywhere near as in depth. And I would say this is better for like getting quick stats, quick research, getting quick answers. But I would imagine that the research will be much better inside ChatGPT. Only one way to find out, let's see. You can also share this, so you can create a link and then share that publicly. But this could be super promising and very, very powerful. Now, I can see many use cases for this. So for example, like customer research reports, video research, content research in general, analyzing the market if you understand like, okay, what's your market landscape like? What your competition like? Even if you were thinking about launching a new product, where well, you could research the market first, get this to do things for you and then come back. But who knows what the research is actually like? I don't know because quite often, you know, we test these things and then in reality, they're not as good as we actually think. So only one way to find out. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's see what Perplexity has got. So Perplexity finds a bunch of images, but it does go through 79 sources. Whereas you can see here, actually ChatGPT 3 Mini combined with the new DeepSeek research agent is only using 20 sources so far. So it actually seems like Perplexity is using more sources for its research. And you can see the report that we got back here. So it's actually really useful. Like for example, let me just go back and I'll show you an example of like ChatGPT versus DeepSeek. Let's plug that in. The other thing that I know is like, for example, in terms of access, number one, it's really only available for pro users today and it's up to queries per month. So plus and team users and free users can't get access just yet. And also, you know, you can't do more than three research reports a day, basically, if you're doing this method. It does say they're gonna change that when it's more cost effective, but I can imagine it probably costs a lot of money to scale this out, as you can imagine. Now, it does say on the page that it uses 100 resources. So I actually broke down the page using ChatGPT 3 Mini, and they said it checks over 100 sources to ensure the information is correct. But let's see right here. So this is a research report back from Perplexity, and it's very detailed. You get information on pretty much everything you, you'd want to know about the topic. So it's got like, for example, step-by-step -step comparisons, nice little tables, sources of everything. It actually checked 53 sources in total for this particular topic, broken down everything into like really logical steps along with strengths and weaknesses, which is super useful, and user statistics as well. And that came back to us in literally like a minute or two. All right, so that took about 15 minutes and we've got the research report and wow, it is very, very, very in depth. It's almost like a thesis. So you can see here, for example, we've got ChatGPT versus DeepSeek, a comparison, and you can see the amount of content inside there. It's absolutely wild. Like, I'm scrolling down. This is unbelievable. 
I've never seen such a detailed report come back from AI before. Out of all the new recent features, I would say this is probably one of the best ones I've ever seen. So it's 10,600 words, which is wild. And you can see here's the report. It's really gone in depth here, like general capabilities. There's no visuals like we asked it for, from what I can see. There are some tables, which is useful. So a feature comparison chart. Like, okay, who created DeepSeek versus who created ChatGPT? When was it released? The model architecture. And it's basically got these right. So for example, like version three from DeepSeek, I think that did come out last month. R1 definitely came out in January 2025. So a lot of these stats actually seem to be right. I'd need to really look through them with a lot of depth. But this is pretty amazing. User satisfaction comparison. So what it's actually done is it's gone on to data camp and it does give us a link straight back to the resource. And it's even linked specifically to that part, right? How wild is that? That let's just check. Has that gone straight to the part of the page? That is amazing. Not gonna lie, that was probably one of the most useful features I've seen from ChatGPT recently. It is very, very good, very in-depth, very detailed. I mean, like you can easily take that and then you could easily create like an amazing blog post from that, right? So let's say, for example, we went over to ChatGPT, we said create a short about it. Let's see what we get back and we'll check that out in a second. But let's come back to the research. Like this is super useful. So it's actually specifically linked to like different bits. So you see here in the URL, it's like hashtag, and then it includes like the chat GPT specific part of the blog, kind of like Google does, but this is just so much more in depth. Imagine if you were trying to go into detail on like, I don't know, for example, let's say the pollution is really bad in your area and you're like, right, okay, give me all the facts, tell me everything I need to know, plus tell me what are the best products to buy. It could probably create something absolutely amazing. The only thing that I don't like is uh, it's almost too much, right? Like you would need about 30 minutes to one hour to really sit through this research report and get something decent out of it. But even references and factual sources and answers, it's like, right, so ChatGPT might say something like this, which make it hard to pinpoint any exact source of fact, whereas DeepSeek operates like this, right? And it's compared and stayed very, very close to the topic. I did notice this from O3, so for example, when you ask O3 for a response, it will give you a lot more depth and you know something that's 3,000 words sometimes if you ask it. Whereas ChatGPT4, I was never gonna do that. But to come back with like a 10,000 word report is absolutely wild. And yeah, you can create like content off the back with short scripts like you see or blog content, video scripts, etc. whatever you want. The only thing that I would say is like, it's not really used the language that we wanted. So for example, I asked it to create that content in third grade language and proprietary software is definitely not third grade language. Like if we take this content and we plug it through Hemingway, we'll check that out. Yeah, grade 10 language, it's not grade, it's not third grade language, but at the same time, is it impressive? Absolutely, is it useful? Yeah, I mean like that has way more use cases than the 99% of the stuff that I've seen from ChatGPT recently. And also if you compare this side by side versus perplexity, it's not, it blows it out of the water. It absolutely blows it out of the water. So if we compare, for example, perplexity versus chat GPT on the research side, like it's useful for just getting little bullet points, little bits of facts here and there. But if you want a dissertation, if you want like the real McCoy and some of the best stuff that you've ever seen on research, then that's probably it, right? It's amazing that it's gone out on the internet as well and just found all that information. Like, this would take you a ridiculous amount of time to produce yourself. The other thing that I would say is like, this is super powerful because you could use it for PR, right? So for example, recently I got featured on like the Daily Mail, businessinsider.com and even NY Post with some research that we created. But honestly, the research and the knowledge you get that you could use for PR from something like deep research agents blows out of the water, it's just absolutely wild. I mean, you can see, for example, it's even, you can see, for example, it's taken some quotes right here. I wanna see if these are actually accurate. So if we take those in quote marks and we'll see if, if people actually search that stuff, let's see. I'm not convinced. So you see that big dash in the middle? That seems like it's been made up by ChatGPT. I can't find that on the internet anywhere. Maybe it's a real review, but you see how there's no source in there? And it says user comparison on a forum, like what forum? What forum are we talking about right here, right? So just something to bear in mind is like, maybe it's hallucinating, it's very, very hard to tell. Like if you wouldn't, you wouldn't submit this report to someone without properly looking it up, but the research is powerful. 
undeniably. And if you want a free SEO strategy session, feel free to get that link in the comments description. We'll show you how we take websites from zero to 145,000 visits a month and generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales on autopilot on this free link building acceleration session. You'll get a free SEO domination plan. So you'll get a custom tailored link building plan so you can generate more sales, leads, and profits to your website. You'll discover the secrets of SEO link building, or answer any questions you have. You'll learn the best link building strategy for your website, plus how to quickly outrank your competitors to link building and how to 10 X SEO traffic based on what's working for us. Feel free to get that link in the comments and description. Appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.